What is going on guys, welcome back. In this quick video today, we're going to implement a simple XOR cipher in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to implement a simple XOR cipher in Python today. Now, this is going to be a very beginner friendly video. I already have two videos on this channel about basic ciphers, one about the Caesar cipher and one about the substitution cipher, the basic substitution cipher. Now, you don't need to watch these two first. You can also watch this one first, but all of these basic ciphers are more about understanding basic principles of cryptography, practicing coding, and not so much about using something in actual cybersecurity for actual encryption of private information or messages. Messages. So this is more about education, not something that you would actually use uh, in a real scenario. Now, what's the idea behind the XOR cipher or the XOR encryption? Now, just as a reminder for those of you who have watched the other videos, with the Caesar cipher, what we do is we have an alphabet, so the collection of all the symbols that we can use, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on, and numbers and, and punctuation and so on, and we just shift the alphabet by a certain, uh, by a certain number. So A becomes C, B becomes D, and so on. Uh, and in the case of the substitution cipher, we don't shift the alphabet, but we just replace the individual uh, symbol. So we map one symbol to another symbol in the alphabet. So A becomes X and B becomes five, for example, and so on. And we just uh, shuffle the alphabet. Now with the XOR cipher, we use a binary operation, the exclusive OR operation, XOR. And what this basically means very simply is in the binary system, we have zeros and ones, and then we have logical operators. So we can have zero and one, and then we can have certain operations between zero and zero, zero and one, one and one, one and zero, and so on. So we have basic operations like an AND operation, the AND operation results in one only if both uh, operands are one. So zero and one is zero, one and zero is also zero, zero and zero is also zero, one and one is one. Now there's also or, there's not, there's uh, NAND and so on. But the one that we're interested in is called XOR. So XOR is exclusive OR. Uh, the difference between XOR and OR is that with an OR operator, you also get a one when you have one OR one. So basically, if you have an ordinary OR, you would have zero or zero equals zero, zero or one equals one, one or zero equals one and one or one also equals one. The only difference now to XOR is with XOR, one XOR one equals zero. So it can be exactly one has to be one, one has to be zero, or in other words, they have to be different. Now you can not only apply this to individual bits, you can also do it to bytes and a bytes is basic, a bytes is basically just eight bits. So we have something like this. For example, this is one byte, we have two times four bits. And then I can have another sequence here, something like this. And the result of XORing these two lines would be 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Because here, 1 XOR 1 equals 0 and so on. And you just apply the operation bitwise here. That's the basic idea behind the XOR operation. Now we can use this operation to do encryption, to do symmetric encryption. And this is done in a very simple way. We can define a function X or cipher. And this function gets as input a text that needs to be encrypted or decrypted and a key that does that. Now, since the key is not always going to be the same size as the text, we need to repeat the key if necessary, or we need to cut it off if, if necessary. So if I have, for example, uh, Let's just add a pass here. Now let's not treat this as text. Let's just say we have a sequence of zeros and ones. If I want to do an XOR operation with a key and the key is only three symbols long, three bits long in this case, uh, what I would have to do is I would have to repeat the key and cut it off then uh, to have a key that's as long as the text. And um, the other way around, if I have a key that's very long, I would have to cut it off just so that the size of the key is the same as the size of the text. That's the basic idea here. And then I can just apply the XOR operation. And how this is done is that every symbol um, is basically represented um, as a code as a byte. So a has a certain byte to it. And this byte is just eight bits. And then we can perform an XOR operation. I can show you that this is the case because we can print, uh, for example, something like uh, if we take 
let's take a string a and code and we can uh, actually can we just do it like this? Let's just see. Not sure if this works. I don't think so. No unsupported for string. But if we add a byte in front of that, no, also doesn't work. So probably we will have to uh, we will have to encode this first. So let's go and say text one equals a text two equals b encode and then we can do text one x or text two or actually probably uh, we will have to do it um, character wise there you go so this is how it works um, so what you do is you take a string you turn it into bytes and then you take the individual um, the individual bits here or the individual uh, characters and you then perform an XOR operation. That's the basic idea here. So you can do that in general with a list comprehension. So I can have something like ABC and something like XYZ. And then I can actually um, perform an XOR operation here by saying, we can turn this into bytes by saying uh, essentially uh, text one, I, X or text two, I, four, I in range, in this case, we have three characters. So let's just hard code, hard code the three here, that would be an X or operation here, uh, character wise. Now, that's just a concept, we're going to put this now into a function, what we want to do first is we want to check if the text is already um, in bytes, or if we have a string, if it's a string, we need to encode it so that we can work with bytes and bits. So we're going to do is instance text str. So if it's a string, the text will be encoded. I think the default is ASCII. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to just adjust the size of the key. So we're going to say if the length of the key is less than the length of the text, we're going to say that the key has to be repeated. So key times length of text floor divided by length of key plus one. And then we want to cut off the key. So key equals key up until the length of the text. So we have trimmed the key and then we are going to perform the X or operation, we're going to say return bytes and then the list comprehension, we're going to say x and then x or operation, this is how you do the x or operation. Um, x, x or y for x and y in and now we're going to use zip, we're going to zip together the text and the key. And what zip does is it basically iterates over both at the same time. So it's the same thing that I did before with the uh, i for i in, uh, in range uh, three. Here we just do it by zipping. So we have text and key and we go character by character in both of them. And we perform the XOR operation. So we can do now something like original text is equal to and then we can do hello world. Subscribe to neural nine. And then we can define a key, the key is going to be uh, a byte object here. So we're going to say B and then the key is going to be secret, for example, and to get the encrypted text, we're going to say x or cipher of the original text and the key, the, then we can print the encrypted bytes, and then we can decrypt them again by doing the same thing. So decrypted is going to be x or cipher encrypted, and the same key. So it's a symmetric cipher. Again, we're not going to have different keys for encryption and decryption decrypt it. There you go. So you can see this is what happens when you encrypt the whole thing. And this is what you get when you decrypt it uh, back. And of course, we can also decode it. So we get a string not bytes. And that's the basic idea behind the XOR cipher. This is how you implement it in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you for watching. See you in the next video and bye.